Welcome and thanks again for stopping by the Exhibitors Forum here in Hall 3. Our next topic is why automotive electrical systems require new microcontrollers. And our speaker today is Alessandro Mariani from ST Microelectronics. Thank you very much. I hope, uh, okay, I hope you had lunch. <laughs> So my name is Alessandro Mariani from ST Microelectronics and I'm part of the product marketing team for automotive and CUs, specifically for electrification microcontrollers. And today um, I will talk about electrifications and micros because we will see that uh, the electrification brings uh, a uh, new application in the market, and the new application requires new technologies, and the technologies new requirements for the microcontrollers. But before digging into it, I want to just start uh, to speak a little bit about the electrification. So we see that uh, from this graph that uh, shows the uh, production of the light vehicles, uh, the electrification is a real trend. You see the light blue lines show the production of internal combustion engines, while the dark blue shows the electric vehicles production. And you see the growth of the electric vehicles, the production of the electric vehicles is around 13% during these years and the future years, while the combustion engines are going to decrease. So the future is really electric, and uh, it's uh, start to be a real, uh, uh, a real thing uh, very, very fast. And this is pushed mainly by the governments, but uh, we'll see that for to um, achieve uh, sustainability and uh, low carbon emission, it is mandatory to have these, uh, um, these new vehicles. But um, our new trends bring also new challenges and uh, the first one, probably the main one, is uh, what is called uh, range anxiety, because when you use an electric vehicle, uh, an electric car, uh, you don't have the same, uh, um, the same cruising range that you have with a standard vehicle. And also the charging time, if you're a user, to go to have a recharge, and in one minute uh, you, uh, um, you have a full recharge with the electric car, this takes time. So improving the performances uh, of both the batteries and the charging is something mandatory to convince people to switch to electric vehicle. But uh, there is not only the rage anxiety, but also performance and safety are uh, taking an uh, uh, important role for the electrification because especially in the past, uh, uh, there was this idea that electric cars were boring to drive. So this is uh, a challenge from one side and an opportunity to the other because the dynamics of an electric car is different and uh, we can use this to, have, to give new feelings to the users. Also the improvement over time because if you think about uh, a, a famous American car brand that have electric cars, uh, they update their cars uh, when it's in the field. So when it's on the road, uh, you have uh, updates that improve the vehicles during its lifetime. And for electrification is, uh, is important as well because you can monitor and gather data and improve the algorithms over time. So when, you, when we speak about uh, electric application, we, sp we speak about uh, this kind of stuff. So starting from, uh, from your left, we see the grid where the electricity is taken, then the grid flows uh, through the electric vehicle supply equipment and arrive into the electric vehicle through the plug. The first application we find in the car is the onboard charger. That is the box that converts the electricity from the grid to the DC current for the batteries. After that, we have directly connected to the OBC, the battery management system, and the power distribution unit that, of course, distribute all the energy, all the electric power to all the system in the car, to the battery pack to the, and the, to the traction inverter. The traction inverter that is controlled by the vehicle control unit. At, uh, on the bottom right, you see that uh, the traction motor that is the, the real heart 
of an electric car, the one that moves the car, and uh, also the performance for the traction inverter are really, really important, both for the dynamics, so we spoke about fun to drive, but also for the efficiency, because the more efficient and the more driving range, cruising range you have. So today I want to focus on one specific application, that is the onboard charger. You see on the left uh, uh, this board that is a reference design made by ST. That is, uh, this, uh, we are talking about high voltage, so you see many big components that are mainly inductors and capacitors. And uh, on the right, instead, uh, we have uh, a simplified scheme on what onboard charger is. It's mainly divided into uh, two different components. The first one is the power factor converter that takes the electricity from the grid that is uh, in an alternate current and can be a um, single phase or three phase and convert uh, in uh, DC. And then we have the DC-DC converter that uh, takes the output of the PFC and uh, convert uh, in high voltage to 400 voltage that is the usual uh, um, battery voltage or even to 800 voltage. That is uh, a new trend that uh, we are starting to see for the batteries. And uh, the type of onboard charger can be, uh, can be several. It can support, uh, as I said before, single phase or three phase. It uh, can support uh, uh, different powers from uh, 3 kilowatts uh, to 7, 11, up to 22 kilowatts that impact on all the electronics, but also on the charging time. Can be monodirectional, so taking the electricity from the grid to the vehicles. But we are starting to see also bidirectional onboard chargers. So taking the electricity from the vehicle and giving back to the grid. This is uh, what is called vehicle to grid. So using your car that is most of the time parked in your box as a battery for your house or to sell, to sell the electricity to the grid. So there are several KPIs. Uh, I listed here the the main ones, but there are also others. Uh, there are the efficiency, of course. Uh, efficiency for onboard charger means that uh, you're improving the charging time. If you want to a uh, bigger range for your car, you, uh, you need big ba bigger batteries. But bigger batteries means also bigger charging times. So efficiency here tends to be as close as possible as 100%. That is really a a tremendous goal. Then we have power density and specific powers. Uh, you saw in the image be, uh, before uh, that uh, uh, the biggest component on the OBC are inductors and capacitor. And uh, try to optimize means reducing the, uh, the size, the weight, and eventually the cost. But this is not just a, an electric device, but it's a smart device. It has a micro. It is connected to the grid on one side, to the, all the rest of the vehicle on the other side. So we need to think about the system also uh, as a smart system that communicates, that is a supervisor. So we have to take into account also other KPIs, such as security and safety, that is very, very important in automotive. So for the first uh, three KPIs, we see that uh, uh, we are switching from uh, uh, traditional transistor technologies. Uh, here uh, we are talking about uh, power electronics uh, where uh, uh, we use in the past IGBT transistor and silicon MOSFET for the actuation of the OBC of the traction inverter. But today there is a strong uh, a switch to other technologies called the wind band gap technologies that are the, sil the silicon carbine and the gallium nitride. On this graph, you can see on the x-axis the switching frequency these technologies can operate, this uh, uh, type of transistor can operate, and on the y-axis the power they can support. So the silicon carbide for OBC are the best choice for the moment because uh, it can support uh, high power that the gallium nitride today is not able to reach. And uh, increasing the switching frequency 
together with a fast control loop from the micro can uh, really improve the efficiency because you have a, a really more precise uh, uh, control signal. But also you can, uh, with uh, this kind of frequency that we are talking about, that is more than 150 kilohertz, you can uh, really shrink down capacitance and inductance, so capacitor and inductors, improving all the rest of KPIs. The problem we have uh, uh, is that uh, there is uh, a gap, an existing gap uh, that is uh, why I'm here today uh, talking about this presentation. So today's microcontrollers are not able to leverage the power of silicon carbide and gallium nitride because uh, they are not designed, as the, these are new technologies, they are not designed to go to this high frequency together with uh, all the uh, system KPIs with, uh, I, I talked before. So what is the today's approach? Today's approach is uh, to use external micros. So you see here the same uh, uh, onboard charger scheme I put before with its proper isolation. And then we use uh, a general purpose MCUs, as always, that uh, communicate with the vehicles and implement all the supervisioning of the system. And connected to it, we use external DSP that are the real controller of the PSC. And this is a good solution because uh, you can uh, really go up to very uh, high frequency, 200 kilohertz, 300 kilohertz, and even more. And so you can uh, uh, meet the electric APIs uh, we talked before. However, there are some drawbacks that the DSP are not meant to be used as an MCU. So the safety goals uh, maybe is difficult to, to be reached with the DSP. If we talk about bidirectional uh, onboard charger, we may think uh, we, um, we may need to reach uh, Azil D, Azil Delta uh, requirement for safety. And DSP maybe has some uh, implementation of safety mechanism, but often does not reach this uh, level of safety. Same or even worse for security, where are not even meant for security. So. Uh, in the future car where the electronic part uh, are uh, more and more complex, uh, you have uh, um, tens of uh, micros on an electric car up to 100. Every single device can be a security threat. So we have uh, the, the industry a mandate that every single device must be secure. And DSP usually does, does not implement any security features. The other point is the AutoSAR. Normally, DSP has its own tool chain, so AutoSAR maybe is not required from, a, uh, from a, an OEM or tier wide, but often it is. So AutoSAR is not something that a DSP can support. At uh, last point is the firmware over the air. So we are talking about updates. Again, we, are, we want something that can improve over time. The idea of the vehicle is changing. And the vehicle is not uh, defined when it's stored, but can evolve during its lifetime. And uh, implementing an update uh, with a DSP is not always easier. Maybe it can be done, but it's very complicated. So what can be a, a solution? A solution is to remove the general purpose uh, MCU, remove the DSP, and use uh, a dedicated microcontroller that is specifically designed for this application. So a microcontroller that can both communicate, so with automotive interface, that can implement uh, security, that can implement uh, safety up to SLD, but can also be able uh, to leverage the silicon carbide uh, um, feature. So going up uh, with uh, higher resolution timers, with fast uh, analog to digital converter, and, and all the IPs that uh, are needed to, uh, to use uh, in uh, this kind of application, the onboard charger, the DC-DC converter, the traction inverters. So this is something uh, that uh, is new to them in the market. Uh, this is something not easy to find. And uh, in, uh, in ST, we are developing a family called Stellar E. Stellar is a ST brand for uh, our automotive microcontroller based on ARM uh, technology. 
that are specifically meant for electrification. A uh, microcontroller that, as you can see, have a fast sensing actuation, have mass acceleration to perform the control loop uh, in a very optimized way that is an enabler for seek and GAN. But on the other side, is, uh, it has uh, all the features that are required in an automotive microcontroller. So safety, as we said before, it has a hardware security module, with, uh, we have uh, hardware support for the over-the-A updates. And of course, we have uh, the automotive interface, we have uh, uh, embedded NVMs, we have uh, uh, a scalable real-time performance based on ARM, as I said before. So we have a full microcontrollers that can allow us to simplify the design because we have a single device instead of a micro plus one, two, three DSPs. So the design is simpler. The development is simpler because we have just one, design, one micro to, to develop. So one software to change, less licenses. So everything is streamlined to have a faster attempt to market, to have a simplified design of the application, and reach all the standards that are required for the automotive industry. I don't want to go into the details, but uh, if you are really interested, we have a couple of uh, these devices in our booth uh, in ST. So I invite you all uh, at all for a stand uh, 148 when we can present more in detail the Stellar A if you want, or I'm open to accept your question. There is a microphone here. You can use it to, to ask me question about uh, the presentation and our products. Thank you very much. No questions? Sure. It's called Stellar E. Yeah. OK, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And uh, I hope to see you at ST Booth. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. And our next speaker at 3.30 PM is Bernhard Rill. So just in a few moments, the next presentation is going to start.